Hello and welcome to The Big Fight. Now, you might have noticed that for the last five or six weeks, we've essentially had one big subject to talk about, which is demonetization, because frankly, that's all that anybody in the country is talking about. But you may have also noticed that instead of getting into the usual political mudslinging, we've actually tried to, on this particular show, take a look at various aspects of the problem, call the top experts of the field in, and try and get them to help us understand, interpret, and look at the path ahead. And that is what we're going to try and do once again right now. Yes, there are just a few days to go before that deadline ends and everyone finishes depositing their cash. But looking forward, the one big change that we are now hearing about, you don't hear the government talking too much now about black money or counterfeit or even national security as much as they are saying, look, digital India is coming, digital payments are the future, and that's the big turning point. Once everyone starts using digital payments, tax numbers will go up, people will be filing their income taxes, it'll be a lovely new world out there. So is that really going to happen? Are there lots of slips between the cup and the lip? And are we overhyping this entire digital India biz business in any case, especially in 2017, when a large number of people don't have access to it? That's the question we're going to try and take a close look at. And joining us, another special panel of experts today who really have all the answers. P.N. Vijay is joining us, uh, representing the BJP, but also a financial analyst, also has been understanding a lot about demonetization and looks ahead at, at what's going to happen with digital payments in, in particular. Salman Sohr is representing the Congress party, but also taking a look at some of the other broader issues that we have out here. Prashant Kumar Roy, one of the top digital gurus that I know of in the country. So it's always great to have you with us. He's the vice president and the head of the of Internet, Mobile and E-Commerce Council at NASCOM and will be able to give us a, a real e expert view on this. Saket Modi, now I'm trying to figure out how quite to introduce you. So you want to introduce yourself, should I call you? You've tried your hand at various things from ethical hacking to advising people. You are, of course, co-founder and CEO of Lucilius Tech. Does that sum it up or do you want to add something else to it? Well, I hack for a living, so you can call me a hacker. That defines what I do. <laughs> you hack for a living. Yes. Have you got into a digital payment gateway yet? Well, we secure the UPI and most of the banks that you transact with, so you, can, you, you should hope So you're the I guardian can. right now. You're the hacker who is manning the gates. One of the guardians, and we will, yes. <laughs> You are also the person I'm going to come back and haunt. If I do start using digital payments and all my money gets stolen, I'm coming and finding you. So Mohan Gurusami, Chairman Center for Policy Alternatives, has been with us and taking a look at some aspects of this. Sunil Abraham joining us from Bangalore, Executive Director for the Center for the internet and society. And society seems to be, if, if the government has its way of going entirely onto the internet, so maybe you want to compress those two terms at some point, uh, Sunil. And uh, finally, we're going to be joined by Deepak Abbott, who's the senior vice president at Paytm, a company that right now is literally thinks that Christmas has come early, <laughs> although it's, uh, it has been facing its own, own challenges, naturally, in keeping, uh, trying to keep pace with everything that's happening. There are other mobile companies, but Paytm's taken an, an early lead in this. But thank you all so much for being with us. Now, before I come to digital, please do bear with me while I spend a few minutes just trying to take a stock of where we are right now in this entire exercise. Now, let's remember, in a couple of days, the official deadline for people going and depositing old notes in banks is going to come to an end. Doesn't mean they can't keep on going and depositing the money in the Reserve Bank of India. They can do that, and by the way, they may continue to do that for reasons that I'm about to outline. What has this all been for? It's been a month and a half. What's it been for? Government said, to start off, counterfeit currencies, all right. Security, terrorists are coming in with Indian currency, and that we are hearing is one of the reasons they did it so fast. Okay. Black money is going to be eradicated. Now. Let's pause the button and look at these three reasons. And then after that, we'll come to two new reasons, which subsequently have been spoken about a lot. Number one, the tax base is going to go up because it's much easier now to catch anyone who's dodgy. And so from 2 3% of people paying their taxes, it's going to become 5%, 10%, 20%. And that's really where revolution will come. That part we will examine a little later. And the fifth part, what we've started off by saying, it's going to be a digital world. Digital payments are here to stay. Once again, easy to track. <clears throat> PN Vijay, before I say anything more, does that pretty much sum up the government's rationale for all this? I think you made a fair summation. 
do you think what do you think of the reasons in all uh, the prime minister came up with first he came up with three uh, you know reasons for doing this and clearly the narrative had changed lots of things have been changed uh, in these last 50 45 days or so and i You're suspect about the rules have you oh, uh, rules <laughs> have the ch rules changed at all the reserve bank of india once it makes up its minds it does it and never changes well that's why they call it the reverse bank of india now so i was waiting for someone to say that <laughs> I'm sure that was uh, coming from somewhere or the other. Yeah. So yes, we have seen a certain number of rule changes. What is it, seventy in the last, uh, you know, thing? But I guess the government will say it's being proactive as something comes up, they change. I'm sorry. I mean, if if we have so many rule changes within forty-five days, that means they did not think it through. Let's just be clear about that. Okay. Now let's start off by assessing what the benefits of all of this have been, because we all pretty much know what the pain has been. Now let's try and look at the benefits again. So let's just park. counterfeit currency it's not that high a number but let's assume that's happened 400 crores or 500 crores or whatever and let's assume the national security part has happened now let's look at black money and i just want to take you through some numbers because in the next week to 10 days i would like you all to stay glued to your tv screens and to the newspapers to try and assess a couple of very important numbers that are going to come out first of all how much old of that cash reserve how many of those old notes are actually going to get deposited a crucial number here's why there were 15.4 lakh crores in old notes that existed these were banned on the 8th of november now let's assuming all of them come back and i've been saying this during this week if all of them come back either there was no black money to start with in which case all of us are going to say what was this entire exercise about but we don't believe that i'm sure there was black money possibility number 2 they were able to launder the black money and if it is possibility number 2 that eventually comes to pass the money all comes back in and why does the money come back in because the fat cats and the rich people and all the crooks in the country were able to launder their money they're going to be a lot of very angry people they're saying this should not have happened so that's why possibility 2 is a cause of some concern for the government which is why the government is now pushing possibility 3 all the money has come back it's come back because people are about to declare their black money under the amnesty scheme this we will not know the answer to till march march right is when the amnesty scheme actually comes to an end the numbers for this will start coming out in april yeah, yeah, yeah. so if a lot of the money comes back in then we will only be able to judge whether this entire demonetization has been a success or a failure from the point of view of getting black money out once we know whether people were able to launder their black money in which case it was a failure or whether they have declared it and the government has made a ton of money in tax and penalty in which case you could argue it was a success is that a fair summary you're absolutely right the summary is right the money could be zero to whatever 15.5 lakhs the thing Your is you're saying bebek the bro 2 lakhs 2 lakh crores yeah, might be it, coming it's a, back it's in. a moving target as yeah. you said it's a moving target people have still time to go to the banks and then to the rbi you see uh, if you agree and all of us would agree that black money is something which has not been taxed and which is not in the system that's that's black money if through this whole exercise the entire money or a very substantial portion has come into the system system i mean into a bank account which is kyc and uh, which has got a pan number to it and it is it is up to the uh, up to the particular bank uh, client to either say it is an income of mine pay 50% tax or or just conceal it don't say anything the tax man gets at you just takes that chance and he pays 81% tax plus prosecution if the so, guy is caught so, so okay if they are now let's let just let, you know and i know yeah. that the stories let, that we have been hearing for the last 10 to 20 days yeah, let me just really make your toenails curl the ways and the imaginative yeah. methods by which people that's, are loaning that's another their argument money. that's a big fight Frightening. altogether we are just looking at the macro numbers and trying to draw some macro conclusions in a professional way right so what we are saying is this amount of uh, untaxed money black money has come into the system has become transparent and is liable for tax right and we have a trace we have a track on every paisa of that and that i think is a big achievement okay we don't know what the number is going to be right so we are hearing estimates that maybe 2 lakh crores will be extinguished will not be redeposited although i'm not 100% sure why that would happen because logically if you instead of tearing up notes it makes sense to deposit the money and say 50% of it goes to the government at least you get 50% so the government will make some money in this through that amnesty scheme it could be 50000 crores 1 lakh crore 2 lakh crores we don't know how much it's going to make would you say that 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 justifies the exercise absolutely, we'll come to the other absolutely not 
You see, the problem with our government is the following. They'll always tell you what the benefits are. They'll never talk about the costs. In anything, you should always look at the benefits and the costs. If, for example, I take your number, two lakh crores, what is the cost of these 45 days plus, not just these 45 days, a real cost is going to be with a, come with a lag, it's going to come later. But do you accept the no, basic no, no, argument? No, 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 let me, no, no, let me just, no, I, uh, by the way, let me just put it on record. I fundamentally disagree with demonetization as, mm. as a policy. Please, let me finish. I am saying your former prime minister I'm saying, said that he thinks the idea is good, but the execution. No, no, no. Let me let me bad. tell you what he is suggesting. The idea is to go after black money. The idea is to try and reduce corruption and all these kinds of things. But the way you do it, the ideas that you put forward, that has to be looked at: benefits and costs. Now, if you take two lakh rupee, two lakh crore rupees, and then see what the cost is to the economy. I'll just give you one number from today's newspaper. Companies that are FMCG companies, fast-moving consumer. Uh, goods companies, soap, shampoo, toothbrushes, those kind, kinds of things. Their valuation in the market has gone down by 1.2 lakh crores. That's the stock market. It no, no, but, no, nice but to see no, no, let me, no, let me, batting for Colgate let, and let, Hindustan Lever. No, no, please, let me finish. <laughs> what does that mean? What are people, no, no, it's, it's, it may be funny, but this is, this is where the shoe pinches you. What people are seeing is the, in the valuation is what is the business going to be like? in the future, what are people doing with the money? They're not able to spend, they're not able to earn. When people are not able to earn, they're not able to spend. You know, the Prime Minister yesterday said or tweeted that I urge the young people to go cashless, get digital wallets, etc. I said, Prime Minister, you promised two crore jobs a year, you give them jobs, they'll get money, they'll deposit it in your bank wallets, e-wallets and other okay. things. So, so, you're, so he's saying basically, no, basically the damage to the, the economy. Damage to the economy. The enlarging the debate to no, a you know, the damage to the, proportions. Mr. Mr. Vijay, the damage There's to the economy the is huge. Discussed. Mark my words, the, 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 okay. the damage is damage coming. Damage to the economy, fine. Based on what we are seeing right now, uh, the possible benefits that are coming directly on an attack on black money, has it been justified? Or are you also disappointed, as many people are, by the staggering different number of ways and scale to which people have been able to launder their black money? First of all, Vikram, this is not demonetization. What you have is a simple currency exchange. you junking in old 500 rupees, 1000 rupee notes and then getting new notes. Demonetization is when you change the currency, you change the value of the currency. The rupee is still the basic Mon, can I, can no, I dispute no, that if you mind for a minute? I'll tell you why I'm disputing yeah. what you're saying. It is demonetization it is for one reason. For one reason. Okay. You have taken 15.4 lakh crores out of the system. And because for some bizarre reason, which nobody till today has been able to explain to me, the government didn't print notes in advance. Precisely. One and a half months later, they've only been able to re-inject 6 lakh Precisely. crores That's into an the act system. of stupidity. 15 and a half lakhs, gone. Six lakhs back in. Most that's an, that's an act. That's an act of stupidity, Vikram, not demonetization. <laughs> demonetization, <laughs> currency exchanges have taken He's place before. Correct. In in 2008, we had currency exchange. New 500 rupee notes came. The old ones went out. We've had 100 rupee notes changing. All kinds of things have happened before. Okay. Certain types of currency, you know, values have been removed. All this has happened before. It meant orderly transition. What you could have had is another orderly transition. But the government said it is going after black money money on which taxes were not paid. Now, out of the total black money, only 4% was being held in cash. 96%, 46% is held in property and, and buildings, 22% uh, 20, in gold, and 26% kept abroad. You have not done anything on this. Okay. You've gone on cash, you, you, yeah, you've, gone on, you know, you, you've gone on cash. And out of the cash, a lot of black money has gone into, back into the system, and it'll come out, because you know, when you have to file your returns at the end of the year, you will have to accept that this is... So, that so there really is some benefit. So, so, but so what is the cost? The cost, you ask me, there are 415 million people who are in the unorganized sector in this country, out of which 215 million people are daily wage labor. What you've done is shut down daily wage labor almost 50%. The construction business which employs 44 million is now almost dormant. The small retailer is almost dormant. That is the vegetable and fruit vendor is almost finished. The... Uh, Farm labor has been left out, the construction labor. So you knocked out 100 million people from their daily employment. No money. The average wage in this country for a, construct, for a worker, unorganized sector, is 272 okay. rupees. So that is enough money to cover a family for a day. If you don't have that money, you're starving. 
And that's what this government has done. Your overall take though on how demonetization has panned out? You know, I think it was a very bold gamble and uh, without now uh, enough has been discussed on the merits and demerits and I'm not going there. Uh, I believe that bold gamble did tackle with aim for both the things and maybe other things, maybe the UP elections and all of that. But black money, now it looks like that may or may not work out, maybe it won't work out. But digital, now that digital is not as much of an afterthought as people are thinking because across the year there have been a number of initiatives around digital. Not least of which three months ago a very empowered committee was set up to actually overhaul the digital payments uh, structure. And that committee was actually under a lot of pressure to give its report, uh, give a very comprehensive report well in yeah. time. Okay, so it does look like there was some planning on the digital side of it. Uh, and so now it's not something which is added, it, it is an yeah. integral so part of it. It's part, it's plan A, A 1B maybe. Okay. No, you know, just uh, just on, 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 on the cost versus benefit. I'd like to say, point out certain facts. That the fact that the mass of Indian humanity is in shatters and you know that, that fabulous you know, Holocaust atmosphere that people are trying to create. If, if there was, come on, just finish me. Um, if that was so, how do you explain across the board in, in, in municipalities, the BJP winning huge wins, huge wins, even in areas where Congress is traditionally strong. You are not till now. It could change. And I'm saying and, the, and one of the things that you need to be careful of is yeah, if yeah. it comes out that all the big fish got away, maybe that will change. That will change that, yeah, yeah. to suddenly become we anger. Have, we have conducted but more the moment, in the last one month than in the last Yeah, but Inspector, no, no. you should know well, that know, you, you got to do change. something about it. Yeah, You're I saying it, catch but the but black bat. How do you catch a guy? Fine. We raided the chief secretary of a state. Right now, A, they are winning elections. And B, anecdotally, it's not that you are coming across crowds of people mm. protesting on the streets, saying Modi, hi, hi. It's not happening right now. Okay. So, I want... And you've been trying to whip it up, but it's not <laughs> been happening. I, want, I want everybody to hear me carefully. Everybody watching at home. I'll talk about the Maharashtra municipal elections because that the Prime Minister tweeted about it. Let me give you facts. In 2014, assembly election in Maharashtra, BJP fighting on its own without Shiv Sena's help, got 42% of the seats. It got 56% of the urban seats. Okay? In this municipal election, fighting with the Shiv Sena, they got 24% of the seats, and Congress got 20% of the seats fighting without NCP. Now, if, by the way, anybody disputes that, I'm willing to challenge them. That means, that means, no, no, no. BJP has been winning elections. No, 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 but, but since, demon, since demonetization has happened, people, you know, remember Amit Shah, the president of BJP, tweeted, that demonetization, this is really, people love it, right? You must have heard it. But if that is the case, why is it that after three phases in Maharashtra, the data shows that BJP has come down in the urban areas and semi-urban semi areas from 56% seats to 24% fighting with Shiv Sen and Congress by itself. Okay. Can I, let yeah. let's, let's just do now. some, let's let's do some very unscientific map polling. Okay, all of you, you are here. Lost. Hang on, hang on. With the rider that this is a random sample and it's an urban audience and the rest of it, I'm just saying, okay, 50 days. Modi, uh, Prime Minister Modi said, give me 50 days. 50 days have passed. Today, how many of you think that demonetization was good? Raise your hands, those who think it was good. Raise it higher so we can count. It's still a significant number of people who feel that way. Now, can I ask you a question? Uh, the, the question that I asked. Why do you feel that demonetization was good? There's a huge, of, huge amount of black money in India and uh, you know if someone you know uh, grabs me out and asks me that give him or her a black money so I can't say him that okay just wait for it I'm providing you a check. Yeah. So it's demonetized. Uh, we won't be left with any paper notes. You and had some. Uh, yeah, yeah. You already had some tax yeah, guys and yeah. others coming so, and give us yeah. bribes and we were seeing it on Twitter that can they, they Sir, but, uh, Further policies can be implied okay. to stop that. You said you support this, right? And he also said that it's because there are, there's a crackdown on black money. Supposing it was to come out that a lot of the people who had black money were able to do something with it. They were able to do setting, they were able to do jugaad, they were able to get away. Would you still support it? I don't support jugaads at all. But I truly believe that they cannot be, be, they cannot be like hiding those things. It will be revealed okay. by the time 